Okay, so let's continue our discussion of how the internet works. The next important concept is that protocols that manage the internet or govern the internet are organized into abstraction levels. Here's one representation of this model. This is called the TCP IP model. So you see there's four layers in this model, application layer, transport layer, internet layer, and link layer. Each plays a distinct role, and each has its associated protocols that manage traffic and manage processing of data at that layer. Here's an example. Well, well, first of all, an important concept is that layers can only interact with the layers immediately above or below them. So take the transport layer. It interacts with the application layer and the internet layer, but it cannot interact with the link layer. The only layer that can is the internet layer that can interact with the link layer and above it the transport layer. And this way of organizing things makes the process of managing traffic and managing processing of data much more effective and efficient. Users are only going to be interacting with the application layer, so that's all we see. And what's at the application layer? Well, there's things like email or browsing on the web. Examples of protocols used at this layer are the small mail transfer protocol, or SMTP or the HTTP protocol, which we learned about in a previous lesson. So those are two examples of applications that we interact with as users of software on the internet. On the next level down, you have a transmission layer. You have the transmission control protocol, or TCP. And this is for reliable transmissions uh, between sender and receiver. It's used by email, web apps. What this layer does, as we're going to see, is it breaks messages into packets, organizes the packets, and then passes them on to the internet layer. And the internet layer is managed by the IP protocol. This is the, these are the protocols that route packages through the internet using the IP addresses of the sender and the receiver. This is called an unreliable transmission, meaning that if packets get lost in transmission, they're just simply ignored. It's up to the TCP protocol to detect these losses and to recover from them. And finally, the bottom layer is the link layer. In addition to the physical links between computers, such as wires, which are used in the Ethernet protocol, or radio signals, which are used in the Wi-Fi protocol, this layer manages traffic within a local area network, so say within your computer lab. How does data flow through these layers? Suppose we're sending a message from A to B. Remember the internet uses an end-to-end -end architecture, so let's say this is a request by A for a web page that's located on B. So how does the information flow? How do these various layers work together to accomplish that? Well, first of all, uh, when A requests a web page from the server B, that request is processed through the transport layer, which breaks it up into packets, and then given to the internet layer, which puts on routing information, and then passed along to the link layer, which passes the data through the internet link or the Wi-Fi link. As it goes from link to link, it travels back up through the internet layer because the routers that have to pass the packets along are using the uh, IP addresses and information in the IP packets. And okay, so it continues in that way through the internet until it arrives at the host or the destination host and then it's passed back through the transport layer where the packets are assembled together again and then handed off to the application. So the request is made for a particular web page. So that's how the information travels through the network. And as you can see, there's several layers and several responsible parties. And that means that data has to be encapsulated into a nested collection of packets. So for example, here's the application packet. We call this the payload. This is your actual email message. That gets put into a TCP packet, which has a TCP header, which among other things includes the number of packets, for that particular message and which packet number it is. Remember, the, the message has to be broken up into multiple packets. When it's passed off to the IP protocol, the IP header has to be added, and this will contain the source 
and destination IP addresses. And when you pass it along further to the link layer, then the, depending on what type of uh, network you're on, if it's an Ethernet or Wi-Fi, they add their own headers to the packet. And so at each level, as the message is being sent, the protocols are adding on these additional headers or removing them to get at the data inside the header. And you can think of this like uh, a letter being put into an envelope where it's put initially into the TCP envelope, and then that is all put into an IP envelope, which is then all put into an Ethernet envelope. And as you receive the information, it's removed from the envelopes in the reverse order in which it went in. Here's a specific example. Suppose I'm going to send email from A to B. And here's the message. To B from A, the subject is hi, and the message is hello. Let's suppose that's broken up into two data packets by the TCP protocol. And the, the header that has to go with it is that this is going to be TCP packet 1. This is going to be TCP packet 2. There's its payload. There's its payload. Right? So they have different parts of the message as their payloads. Those are then passed on to the internet layer where the IP addresses are added on. So in both cases, the same IP address is added on. So now for this packet, we know that it's packet number one of two, and it's going to this particular destination. This is packet number two of two. It's going to this destination. At the link layer, another packet of information is passed on, the Ethernet address of the particular device that uh, is going to receive this message. When we go back through this in reverse order, remember, uh, the TCP layer has to take a, these individual packets and organize them into a single message that's passed on to B from A. So that's an overview of how information is handled by these various protocols, how it's encapsulated in various types of packets that are used to manage the, the processing and routing of the information through the internet. We're going to pause here now and let you try this with a hands-on activity that models this process. So you're going to get a really good sense of how this all works after this next Pogel activity. Have fun.